Good evening and welcome to the October 15th regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. At this point, if you could silence your cell phones and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, it was great hearing all the kids yes. recite the pledge. Nice, strong <laughs> voices. Yes, thank you. Mr. McFarland, could you take attendance for us? Absolutely. President Singer. Here. Vice President Branstad. Treasurer Frizee. Here. Member Baker. Here. Member Blazy. Here. Member Friedel. Here. We have six out of seven present tonight. Thank you. All right, moving into the consent agenda, are there any items you would like to remove from the consent agenda and discuss separately? All right, seeing none, I would accept a motion to accept consent agenda items 2.1 through 2.5. It's the approval of the minutes from September. Uh, two employees recommended for uh, employment. Uh, uh, three announcements of resignations, approval of, of the payments of the school system bills, and legal invoices for payment. I will move we adopt consent agenda items 2.1 through 2.5 as identified on the regular meeting agenda. Support. Moved by McFarland, support by Friedel. Um, is, uh, and all those in favor of accepting the consent agenda say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Moving into item three, which is Board of Education Matters, presentation just to the board. Mr. Sherrill. Our first shining star for this month is Peter Buffa. Peter would come up and join me here for a few minutes. I'll read a little bit about you, Peter. Um, Mr. Buffa joined the MPS Transportation Department in 2011 as a paraprofessional. Before coming to MPS, Mr. Buffa worked at Dow Chemical for many years and also at the Midland Community Center. In 2016, Mr. Buffa <clears throat> passed his state bus driver's test and transitioned to a substitute bus driving position. Today, Mr. Buffa has his own route and transports MPS students in the morning, afternoon, and miscellaneous events and field trips. Mr. Buffa was nominated for a shining star by MPS staff members. Among their comments were the following. I am recommending Mr. Buffa for a shining star because of his caring attitude. He is one of the best bus drivers for our new pre-primary center at Carpenter Street School. He is always cheerful and greets the students by their name and is genuinely happy to see them. He understands that these are our youngest learners and knows, and knows they often need extra practice as they learn their new routines. He doesn't rush them or get them impatient when things don't go as planned. Mr. Buffa is extremely conscious of their safety and always double checks that all students are accounted for each day. His positive and caring attitude shines for the children and the adults he is in contact with. Congratulations, Mr. Buffa. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Well, we need a great caring guy for those little ones. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And our second shining star is Karen Staley. If Karen would come on up. Or we'll read a little bit about Karen. Ms. Staley joined the MPS team as a sixth grade teacher at Adams Elementary in 1994. She transferred to Jefferson Middle School in 2003 and to teach sixth grade and continues to teach sixth grade at Jefferson today. Karen earned her bachelor's of science degree from Central Michigan University in elementary education in 1994 and her master's of arts degree from CMU in 1997. Last year, you remember that Karen was one of the MPS teachers involved in the Nepal project. This global project in education involved three MPS schools who worked to raise money to rebuild a K-8 school in Nepal that was severely damaged by a 2015 earthquake. Karen was one of the two MPS teachers and two community members who traveled to Nepal in January to attend the opening and dedication ceremony after the school was rebuilt. Karen's passion for sharing the world didn't stop there, however. This year, she began a culture club at Jefferson Middle School to share international mindfulness with Jefferson Huskies. In addition, Karen is involved with the robotics program at Jefferson Middle School. <laughs> Mrs. Staley was nominated for a shining star by an MPS parent. Among their comments were the following. Karen is always available to parents and students in need of answers for our extra help. She runs the Culture Club at Jefferson, 
and is also the staff liaison to the robotics team. She always goes above and beyond to show the students that she cares about the past, present, and future. Congratulations, Karen. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's a great way to start off. Yes. And now we move into item 3.2, which is our PYP journey, and that's with Plymouth. Do you want to yep. introduce our... And we'll, I'll introduce Margaret Doan. I think she's here to mar introduce who she brought with her tonight. Uh, the thank you for having us again. Um, we are very excited to be here tonight. We have a team of students, and we have our um, PYP and uh, PLTW coordinator, Jen Service, here to present. Um, as I think Jen will say, so I'm probably stealing her thunder, this is our first group of kiddos that was introduced to the primary years program as kindergartners. Oh. So they have completed their journey. They will at the end of this fifth grade year. So this is a pretty special group we have here today. So I will now pass the microphone along to Jen Service. Thank you. Always one of our favorite times. I think the quote of the night was, I've never been on TV before, so this is pretty exciting. <laughs> so good evening. As Margaret shared, my name is Jen Service, and I am the PYP and STEM coordinator at Plymouth Elementary School. And we are here to share tonight our PYP uh, journey to transdisciplinary learning. As I reflect on my journey, it amazes me how far we have come. Six short years ago, I started my journey with several MPS teachers and administrators attending my very first conference in Cincinnati, Ohio. After two and a half days of very intense training, I remember leaving with my head spinning. All of these new words and terms and ideas and new ways of thinking, transdisciplinary, essential elements, units of inquiry, just to name a few. I was thinking, where are we going to start and how is this going to come together? What will it look like and how will we know? So as many of you know, shortly after this conference, PYP was implemented at Plymouth Elementary as a phase one school in the 2013-14 school year. This very special group of fifth grade students that are here with me tonight began this journey that year as kindergartners. Six years later, we are here to share our successes with you. Everything has come together over time. It looks awesome. And these students are here to show you how we know that. They're here to share a snapshot of their current unit of inquiry, how this unit is transdisciplinary in nature, how the essential elements of the program help them to make sense of this world, what it means to be a classroom community, and finally, some of the really cool connections that they have been able to make. So without further ado, I would first like to introduce my friend Kaya to share with you about what a classroom community means to her. Hi, my name is Kaya and I'm a fifth grader in Ms. Renfro's class. A big part of the PYP is building a community. One of the things I like most is that my classroom is unique. We work a lot on communication. It is important that we all have a voice and we are able to share our thoughts and ideas with each other. We have learned the importance of not just knowing the learner profile attributes, but living them. For example, it should be natural for us to be principled and do the right thing. We should always be open-minded to others' ideas and viewpoints. It is very important to be comfortable with your classmates. Sometimes it can be scary to share a new idea or perspective, but we have learned how to be risk takers in my class and to be respectful of each other's ideas, even when we do not agree. Our classroom is like a small family. We help each other out and problem solve many times during the day. For example, sometimes we do riddles and we all have to work together to solve the riddle. One of my favorite community building and classroom activities that I would like to share with you is called Keep the Quote. Every weekend we are encouraged to find meaningful quotes to share with, our, with the class to help build our classroom community. Each Monday we share our quotes and the class votes on one quote for the week. A few weeks ago my quote was, we are so worried about being pretty. Let's be pretty kind, pretty funny, Aww. pretty smart, and pretty strong by Nicole Britt. My quote was chosen for the week, and it was my job to keep an eye out for the classmate that followed that quote. 
On Friday, I chose a classmate that exemplified my quote and I presented them with the quote. This person also got their picture in our classroom newsletter. This is just one example of how we care about one another in my classroom and it helps us build our community. Next, I would like to introduce Elizabeth to talk about our transdisciplinary themes. Thank you. Hi, my name is Elizabeth. I'm a fifth grader at, in Mrs. Cross's class. Every year, we study six different themes in PYP. This year, we started sh with sharing the planet. Our central idea is communities of organisms adapt to the environment by choice and change. We keep the following big concepts in our mind during the unit. Interdependence, migration, and history. We started our, our mind, wait, we, we started the year off with learning about early people in the Americans, Native Americans. But since then, can you believe that we have not only learned about na early Native Americans, but we have learned how to work with big numbers and how to incorporate them into our learning, how to work with big num. Wait. We have learned to take on different perspectives in our writing. We are learning about robots and making connections in the past and present. And finally, we are sharing, we are learning about invasive species all within one study of unit, sharing the planet. Hmm. At various points throughout our day, we bring all of our learning and ideas back to our central idea. We are always making connections across the different, across <coughs> the d different subjects that this is what it means to be transdisciplinary. Here is an example of a connection a classmate, classmate made in PLTW. We have to read informational articles and different robots about different robots. After the reading, we had a class discussion about the different robots. One classmate shared a connection and said, wow, all of this connects back to our central idea. People had to adapt over time due to the changes in our world and robots have helped along the way. Com comments like this happen all day as we work on transdisciplinary learning in it's neat how many connections we can make. I like hearing different ideas and perspectives of my classmates. My next friend, Noah, is going to talk about the PYT, PYP attitudes. We practiced really hard on the word transdisciplinary, so she nailed it. She asked if she could say it twice. <laughs> Hi, my name is Noah, and I'm a fifth grader in Ms. Renfell's class. I'm here to share my thoughts about the PYP attitudes. For each unit of inquiry, we focus on a few, but we should always be working to show all 12. In our Sharing the Planet unit of inquiry, we are focusing on the attitudes, creativity, enthusiasm, and commitment. I would like to share my thought about commitment. In my classroom, we created our PYP unit of inquiry board together. I thought this was really cool. We got to share our voice and our ideas instead of just the teacher. My teacher gave us each a responsibility, and my responsibility was to create the attitude card for commitment. I was responsible for writing the definition of commitment. I looked it up on my own, but I was also allowed to write what it meant to me. I said that commitment was a group of people that worked together to get a job done. They are committed to finishing that job. In this transdisciplinary unit of inquiry, we have learned about commitment in many different ways. We have learned that Native Americans were very committed to keeping their tribe together, keeping everyone safe, healthy and safe. I've made the connection that families do that today. In math, we've been working with big numbers. We made some comparisons to members of different Native American tribes and looked into the distance the tribes traveled. I have learned that big numbers can be challenging, especially when learning how to multiply them. I had to make a commitment to being a problem solver when working with these problems. Finally, in this unit, we are learning about robots. Eventually, we are going to build a robot in small groups. I know we are going to need to make a commitment to get the job done. It may not be easy, but we are going to need to work together and problem solve. 
As a fifth grader, I have made a commitment to do my best in every subject and always try my hardest. I have learned that as a PYP student, it is okay to make mistakes, but it is also important to never give up. Thank you. I would like to introduce Porter and Alexis. And my name is Porter, and we are fifth graders in Mr. Sabrin's class. We are here to talk about the PYP key concepts and approaches to learning. Even though our sharing the planet unit of, inquiry, unit of inquiry only focuses on three key concepts and two approaches to learning, we want to share how our classroom incorporates all of these throughout our entire school day. We are always making connections. The key concepts and approaches to learning are always available to us. We have all of them on our front whiteboard with magnets. As we take and share ideas throughout the day, we can slide them into our learning. I would like to share a lesson that we incorporated the key concepts into. We are learning about robots in PLTW. In one of the lessons, we read about nine different robots and the jobs they do. Some are used in the military. Some are used to help with ordinary items. Some are used to help people with disabilities. And some are used to help people survive. When we are done reading, Mr. Sabrin asked us to think about the eight key concepts in it and asked anyone if they had a connection to share. Here are a few ideas that we came up with. Connection. The Native Americans use technology such as spears and arrowheads for survival, just like the Da Vinci robot that helps with surgeries to help people survive. Change. Robots changed and evolved over time based on the needs of people sim similar, to how the pe pe similar to how the Native Americans changed their location, and where they settle, depending on food and their needs. Responsibility. Different robots have different responsibilities depending on the type of robot it is. Different Native American tribes have different responsibilities depending on where they settled. These are just a few examples of ways that we can connect our different subject areas into our unit of inquiry. Hmm. I would like to share how we incorporate the approaches to learning into our school day. Self-management skills have been important to us since the beginning of the school year. In our classroom, we are learning the importance of making informed choices. We will be very important to start our robot builds. We have also learned the importance of safety during different parts of our school day and have incorporated this into our, our classroom essential agreement. For research skills, we have learned how to use information from different subjects and apply it into new things we are learning. For example, in math, we are learning about how to work about, about and working with big numbers. We have applied these skills to Native Americans when learning about how long ago they lived, how far they traveled, and different populations of groups. We also collect data, data on different types of robots and compare and contrast how they are the same and different. Finally, we work on can, communicate, communication skills each and every day. It is important for us to, to listen to each other's ideas and build on our knowledge. We all have a voice in our classroom and our ideas are valued and accepted. Though our different classroom conversations, we are learning that all of our ideas are connected and just need to take the time to listen to, another, to one another. Though we'd like to leave you with this today, our class motto, we're all in this together. Finally, Preston is going to share his ideas about action in the, in the PYP. Hi, my name is Preston, and I'm in a fifth grader in Miss Cross's class. I think action is an important part of the PYP because without action, nothing would get done. <laughs> Taking action makes me think about a time when I was walking down the hall, and I said to myself, why isn't someone going to fix this or help? And then I thought, oh, wait, I am somebody. PYP <laughs> students work to make the community a better place, and it starts right at school. Did you know that an idea that starts at school could become worldwide when I get older. A few examples of taking action at Plymouth have been the green team. This team is made up of fourth and fifth graders and they help take care of the school recycling. We have had a group of students help the homeless. When I was in second grade, I made a poster for the bathroom to remind the students of the importance of conserving water. We have an animal abuse group at school that helps collect new items to donate to pet shelters. Finally, I am working with Ms. Pung, our family intervention specialist. I am taking action and beginning a daily affirmation morning announcement. I got this idea from an activity we did in my class at the beginning of the year. My teacher had us each choose a word, and I chose proud. We had a week to place two items in a bag to share with the class. The items I 
had to relate to the words we chose. I shared two wrestling medals and said, I am proud because I worked really hard in wrestling. This year in States, I came in fourth place. I liked this activity and talked to Miss Pung about my action. It is important that kids at Plymouth feel good about themselves and get to know one another by having a daily affirmation on the announcements. Students will be able to start the day in a positive way, feel happy, and make new friends. It is important to have a heart and take care of the world around us. We can make a difference one student at a time. Thank you for allowing me to share different ways we take action at Plymouth Elementary. <laughs> Thank you. So as you can see, our journey has taken us to some pretty amazing places, and we have some pretty amazing kids. All of the thoughtful ideas, connections, and reflections that were shared tonight are a culmination of how this program has transformed our students and our classrooms. It is so exciting to visit classrooms to see this learning take place. Thank you for inviting us tonight and for allowing our students to share a sneak peek into their transdisciplinary learning and unit of inquiry. Our journey has been a pretty exciting one, and we look forward to what the future has in store for these fifth graders. A favorite quote to leave you with tonight by Ernest Hemingway. It is good to have an end to journey toward, but it is the journey that matters in the end. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wow, that, you did a wonderful job presenting, and I'm sure uh, our board members have some questions for you or comments. I Holy a, cow, go ahead. <laughs> I, I was just going to say communication skills. You guys know how to communicate well, standing up here in front of the, a whole room full of adults, and you spoke very clearly and distinctly. Um, I'm real proud of you. If we couldn't see you talking, I would think you're eighth graders. <laughs> really, very impressive. And I have a, a number of notes here, and I'm not going to ask you a bunch of questions, but one of them, my first one, is articulate. You guys are very, very articulate in your speaking and conveying your message. Uh, level of poise and confidence, very impressive. The depth of knowledge of your PYP unit of inquiry is very, very impressive. You guys have come on a wonderful journey, and you should be very proud of yourselves and very proud of your teachers for taking you on that journey. Um, I could go on, but I'll, I'll leave it at that. I would say the same thing. I'm so proud of all of you. And to think you started this, it's hard to believe, six years ago um, as kindergartners. I remember when we were deciding to put PYP in your school, and everybody thought, what is PYP? Well, you've shown us really well what PYP is. And my question is, do you have a favorite part of the journey that you have liked over the years? Do any of you... Want to have an idea, Preston? In first grade, we did a where we'd raised um, chickens. Oh. Um, that was my favorite part because talking to the microphone. <laughs> because at the end, um, we <clears throat> got to choose the names, and I chose. Um, well, it had to be a class vote, and I forgot what one of it was, but it was a really funny name. Um, it was a Christmas. <laughs> um, and, and we got a, um, to take a picture with it. And I chose my favorite tick. It wasn't the best looking one. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> but I loved it. Oh, that's great. Oh, awesome. See, it's, it's, um, one of you girls said something about being pretty, so it was pretty in a different way, your chick, huh? <laughs> well, um, I have something to re relate to Preston. Well, um, when we were raising the chicks in our class, we had this boy named Nathan in our class, Nathan Pham. <laughs> and um, he... Um, he got to name one of the chicks, and we we called him Big Boy because whenever he, he laid in your hand, and he would fall asleep. Aww. That's cute. And he was the biggest chicken. <laughs> um, my favorite part about the PYP is when we got to 
incorporate the PYP concepts into our Native American learning. It was just a couple weeks ago, and I liked learning about the past and how they traveled. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for all your details and answers. Um, in third grade, I really liked it when we raised caterpillars. Um, we got them when they were like this big. It was awesome. Um, and we got to watch them grow up and it was really cool to watch the life cycle from little tiny to really, really big. Um, and then to the chrysalis and then to the butterfly. And then we got to set them free into the woods at the end of the year. And it was, it was really cool. <laughs> Very good. Well, thank you for coming out and sharing your PYP journey with us. And we are all very excited to watch you as you move into middle school and then high school and uh, see how the journey continues. So thanks for coming to visit us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll give them a minute to... Exit. <laughs> it's a good lesson. <laughs> that was great. All right, now we will move into item 3.3, .3, and this is for action. Um, we have an expulsion and reinstatement hearing. Mr. Bruton? Yep. Um, this is for student A, a board <coughs> subcommittee of two board of education members, Superintendent Cheryl, myself, and school administrators met on October 9th <coughs> in regard to student A, who is being recommended for expulsion. It is the committee's recommendation that student A serve the expulsion. Student A can apply for reinstatement for the 1920 school year. The student will be receiving academic services from the Juvenile Care Center, and this action does require a roll call vote from the board. Okay, very good. Mr. McFarland, could you lead us in our roll call vote? I certainly can. President Singer. Yes. Vice President Brantsett is absent. I say yes. Treasurer Frizee. Yes. Member Baker. Yes. Member Blazy. Yes. Member Friedel. Yes. Okay, we have six yes votes. Okay, very good. So for uh, the expulsion hearing, we have uh, all in favor. And we will move on then to item four, which is a uh, request to address the board. Do we have anyone who would like to request the board? If you could say your name and your address, and we'll set the clock for five minutes. Just you don't need the stool. I'll <laughs> the stool a little. Okay. All right. Uh, Jennifer Vanette, 603 Coolidge Drive. I'm here because the MPS has campaigned in favor of the SRO millage. As a parent, I expect that MPS teaches our children how to examine evidence in order to draw conclusions. I also expect that the district will model that in its own decision making. And that is not happening in this case because the truth is the only data that exists to say school resource officers are helpful comes from organizations that stand to benefit from increased policing. When you look at independent and academic studies, the results are mixed at best. Even the United States Department of Education has found SROs to be at best ineffectual and at worst damaging. The U.S. Department of Education Civil Rights Office shows that schools with SROs are more likely to act in punitive rather than restorative ways when disciplinary action is warranted, and that burden falls heaviest on minority students, including students with disabilities. SROs are often believed to be a response to school shootings, but in fact they increased in the 1990s with the rollout of zero tolerance policies. SROs peaked in 2003 and have since declined. It turns out that schools have actually never been safer. Reported rates of school violence and theft have been in decline for the past 25 or so years. And I should note that those rates are still in decline despite the pullback of SROs since 2003. And if SROs deterred crime, we should have seen an increase, but we did not. So let's talk some numbers. According to the U.S. Department of Education's Office for Civil Rights, black students make up only 16% of the national student enrollment, but 27% of students' referrals to law enforcement and 31% of students subjected to school-related arrests. Students with disabilities make up just 12% of student enrollments, but make up 25% of those arrested. Students with disabilities also make up 75% of students subjected to physical restraint and 58% of students subjected to seclusion from schools as a punitive measure. 
SROs are expected to carry out some functions of a counselor or social worker, but with arresting authority and the license to carry a weapon. And there's a lot of gray area. Students have reported they believed an SRO to be a trusted advisor only to find themselves in legal jeopardy. Mr. Sharo promoted SRO's uh, ability to get information out of unwitting students at the last PIC meeting. And the students have a right to not self-incriminate, but SROs are known to use the appearance and demeanor of a concerned adult to get written legal confessions without telling a student of their right to remain silent or right to counsel. No single national data set exists. However, there are studies that show a suspension, expulsion, and arrest for minor offenses, such as pranks, graffiti, or fighting, increase with the presence of an SRO. And one independent study showed that to be at a rate of five times a school that did not have an SRO. And if you enter the juvenile justice system or face alienation from school suspensions, you are less likely to complete your education. So what does prevent crime? According to studies, effective actions a school district can take include a combination of structure with clear rules fairly applied, supportive teachers and counselors who have been trained, and smaller class sizes. Smaller class sizes aid teachers in building true relationships, which can often help in recognizing problems before they're manifested into disruptive behaviors. Better than punitive practices involving in-school isolation, suspension, and expulsion, restorative justice practices have been found to increase good educational outcomes while building life skills in conflict resolution. And <clears throat> students in environments that practice restorative measures are more, less likely to commit another offense. Some of you will say we've had SROs in the high schools and that you'll provide anecdotes about how great they are, but it doesn't diminish what the data tells us. And our current individuals are likely wonderful and caring people, but because there's little oversight due to the ambiguity of whether SRO reports to school administrators or the police, and because they have the authority to override a teacher in the classroom, we're taking a lot on faith. The Congressional Research Office concluded there's not evidence that SROs prevent school shootings or other crimes. As a result, they've pulled back federal funds. That's why we can't get federal funding for such programs. And that's why we're being asked for a local tax for this measure. And it's disappointing that a school district is not looking at the data and still campaigning on behalf of this. So I'm asking you to vote no. Thank you. Thank you. We usually take this as information and don't respond. However, she did mention you specifically. Did you want to respond now or just wait to the end? Uh, I have no comment. Okay, no comment. All right. Um, we hold our comments mostly to the end, so if anyone would like to comment on that at the end, that's absolutely fine. I made a mistake on item 3.3. We went into a roll call vote and <coughs> without a motion. motion. So could, um, could we go back to item 3.3 on the expulsion and get a motion? So moved. And could I get a second? Support. Okay, moved by uh, Fidel <coughs> and supported by Frizee. Before we vote, can I just highlight that the student's going to continue receiving academic services at the VCC, and that this is, even though it's an expulsion, we don't forget about these kids. We don't throw them out there and say, <coughs> see you in a year. We continue to work with them throughout the year, just in a different location and a different method. Thank you. You're right. Absolutely. And can we redo our roll call vote then? Yeah, we certainly can. President Singer. Yes. I vote yes. Treasurer Frizee. Yes. Member Baker. Yes. Member Blazy. Yes. Member Friedel. Yes. The vote has not changed. It's All still right. six yes. Thank you. All right, and uh, <coughs> moving into item five, curriculum instruction and assessment. We had a, a study meeting, and Ms. Friedel will share the minutes with us. This meeting took place on Monday, September 17th at 2.15. Uh, we met at Northeast, um, the Northeast um, high rea Highly re re high re Reliability School Initiative. That was a mouthful. Um, Dirk DeBoer, Northeast Middle School Principal, and Jen Lennon, a learning coach, presented information about their school improvement effort efforts through the Marzano Highly Reliability, High Reac Reliability <laughs> HRS Framework. The HRS <laughs> is grounded in research and supports Northeast's implementation of the most powerful strategies to enhance student learning and continue teacher development. 
Northeast has been uh, credentialed through the first three levels of the HRS framework, which includes safe and collaborative culture, effective teaching in every classroom, guaranteed and viable curriculum. As Northeast continues this journey, they are ready to begin implementing new methods of assessing and measuring student learning, which will result in a new way of grading. Teachers have developed a proficiency scale, a tool that details the four levels of learning progression for each essential standard. With these scales, measuring learning progress and reporting grades becomes more standards-based and therefore a much more accurate reflection of what the student knows and is able to do. This school year, 6th and 7th grade science and English language arts teachers at Northeast are implementing these new methods. They are moving away, away from the 100-point grading scale with letter grades and towards numeric grades that align with the, the proficiency scale. For this year, students will continue to receive letter grades on report cards, but within the classroom structure, teachers, students, and parents will use the new system for reporting learning progress. School leaders will support and, mon and monitor this work and share the progress of learning with other staff at Northeast, um, with other staff as Northeast looks to extend this practice full scale in the future. At the start of the school year, Mr. DeBoer sent letters to all 6th and 7th grade parents informing them of this change and will continue to have conversation with all the stakeholders to ensure all are informed and understand the power of this new practice. Memo adoption. The district is renewing the digital subscription to Connect Accounting, a curricular support for high school accounting one and two courses. This resource was pre previously approved by the Board of Education and followed the standard review and approval process. Topic brainstorm. The committee discussed possible topics and site visits for future meetings. It was adjourned at 3.30 and we had another meeting today, which the notes will be uh, at the next meeting. Great. It was really <coughs> cool um, to uh, see to have this uh, a proficiency scale developed for the units of study and then to um, see how students who may have started off very low could still progress up and be considered the A student um, by achieving what was standard level or... or um, so you're looking at growth. Yes, looking at Not growth. Not achievement, but growth. Yes. Right, yes. that's wonderful. I, I'm fascinated with Marzano's research, and uh, I read one of his books. He's written 30 or more at this point, and um, I just was really excited to hear Northeast is on board with the Marzano teaching and learning. I think it's going to be just fantastic to watch and see, see what happens there. Um, when we talk about assessments, one thing I like about Marzano is it, they use student-generated assessments instead of obtrusive or when you, you, know, you stop your, your teaching in the class and then the students take an assessment. But with, with the Marzano, uh, it, it's more student-generated, so it's not stop and go, but it, it's more um, questioning and getting to the impact in the, of the growth and, and what the student has actually learned. I too have um, uh, I had the opportunity while I was teaching at Midland Public Schools at, at Dow High. We also embraced Marzano's uh, work and uh, d attended a couple different conferences with the group. And um, it it is a different way of assessing. You don't need to have standardized tests or or um, necessarily pen paper paper tests to find out what students know and how they have progressed from point A to point B. It's really right. wonderful. Well, great. Thank you for the detailed report. <laughs> we got to get this <clears throat> new director here <laughs> on board with a little shorter. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> we'll ask her to put smaller words in next time. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, we will move into item six, which is finance facilities and operations, and we have study committee minutes, uh, I believe. Correct. All right. Mr. A little, a little more brief than the uh, previous one. <laughs> <laughs> we met October 1st. Uh, myself, Mary, Pam, Mr. Sherrill, Brian, and Bob were all there. Daryl Dembro from Barton Mellon was also present. Uh, we discussed with Mr. Cooper, Mr. Sherrill, reviewed and discussed the following items with the committee. One, the July and August financial reports. It was noted that the expenses in this period were higher than last year due to a third pay cycle. Uh, the second, HSA employer contribution, more annual licenses being paid in July, and the ordering of project lead away materials. Number two, update in the sale of the vacant mills property being placed out for bid. Bids are due by October 30th at 10 a.m. And three, the update on the Midland Community Press Midland Community Stadium press box, um, which now is, I believe, down. So yep. there's your update. Um, <laughs> and for the bond, Mr. Dumbro and the FFO committee reviewed the additional bond information requested by the board by a board member, and also reviewed information available on the district website under the heading of MPS bond update. Our next meeting is Monday, November 5th at 5 o'clock. Very good. Thank you. I'm still riding the high of uh, our unrestricted fund balance being a 21.8%. And uh, just a reminder from our audit that uh, we had gotten a clean audit with, with no findings in the prior year or current year. So just great, great news all the way around as far as uh, finance facilities and operations go. So thank you for that update. Welcome. Are we also selling the other property or not yet? We um, um, the title came back with a um, hundred year issue on that property when it was donated to us. So the recommendation was to wait an additional five years um, because it was pretty hard to find the most current relative of of the Larkin family who had made that donation. And so in five years, the title uh, will be more clear and easier to sell. We're, we could sell it, Brad, but we may later find that this relative exists that we don't know. And so since it's at a um, couple acres, I think we've decided just to sit down into that clearance of that title. That came up real late in the title search. Okay. Okay, we're moving into item 6.2, which is for information. Yeah, I actually have uh, three items here. I'll kind of go in succession here. First, for information, there are 35 gi gifts on that list for $43,623.65. Uh, can't mention them all, but you'll notice uh, a lot of robotics, athletic teams, uh, teacher supplies, student supplies, uh, auditorium, the pool. Uh, kind of runs the gamut of every place we can get them from. Uh, also, have you known on the robotics, uh, you'll see it's a lot more of the other areas other than the high school teams, which you're kind of used to seeing, and we're getting more and more either elementary or middle school teams. Uh, and again, that goes somewhat on what season we're in, in which are competing. But that was a very nice gift by all of those. Uh, the second, uh, 6.3, does require your action. Uh, we have two gifts there totaling $15,910.50. Uh, they're here because by board policy, anything over 5000 as a gift you vote to accept. One was uh, just shy of $6,000 for uh, basketball equipment that Northeast put on their tennis courts, if you see it, that the Boosters Club wanted to put up some baskets so they could uh, shoot at lunches and that different times, so they did and got that gift from them. And the other is what's commonly referred to as the teacher uh, wish list and also the accelerated uh, reader program. And that was just shy of $10,000 from the Woodcrest uh, PTO. And again, when a teacher wish list, it's really a supply list for the teachers. And a lot of the PTOs say, tell us what you'd like and then decide how much they can fund. So that's why they call it a wish list. But those two items, you, you could do them together, but it requires uh, action at this time for you to accept those. Great, thank you. I'd accept a motion. Move that we accept the gifts in um, item 6.3 from the Northeast Middle School Booster Club and the Woodcrest PTO. Support. Moved by Baker, support by McFarland. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? I do have one more item here of note for you. It's just informational, but it's a gift. 
So the value is not there, but I can tell you in both cases, expensive piece of equipment. Um, we were lucky enough uh, from Ferris State University to pick up um, some different welding equipment. Um, and that was, they were so all donated, didn't cost us anything, and also a power miter saw for the building trades program. So those are two items, again, that were donated to us uh, that uh, we just have separate from the ones that are dollar amounts. Excellent. Thank you. All right, then we will move into item seven for human resources. Right. Uh, the board and staff extend their deepest sympathies to the family of Mr. Charles Campbell, who passed away on September 14th of this year. Mr. Campbell, Campbell taught agriculture and was the assistant principal at Midland High for 34 years, retiring in 1983. Thank you. Uh, moving into item eight, which is correspondence to and from the Board of Education. We have letters going from the Board of Education. Then we have um, a FOIA request from Michigan Education Association for, prayer, uh, for professional course forms submitted by bargaining unit employees. Then item nine is scheduled activities. And you, would, you will find on our website and on the meeting minutes our next uh, scheduled board meetings. And we'll move into study discussion session. So if we could start over here to my right. Brad, you want to go ahead and start? Sure. Um, I'd just like to congratulate and thank the, all the people from Plymouth and their presentation. Uh, Kaya, Elizabeth, Noah, Porter, Alexis, and Preston. Um, play on words, but pretty awesome. Um, and sharing their PYP journey. Um, also looking forward to see what the, all the user groups come up with for their plans and desires and wishes for uh, the new press box for the stadium. I know that's in process right at the moment of trying to figure out what we need. Are you well, going to sit in on that one? I haven't been in, formally invited yet, but I'd be happy to do it. Um, there's a lot that goes into that, uh, a lot of technical items, and as well as how tall and everything else that goes into it. And going around the state to various different stadiums throughout Michigan that we go to, there are a gamut of, op of op options to us of what can we do and What's it going to cost? And I don't know, potentially maybe in a fundraising position. I'm not really sure. Um, but all that will play out as we figure out what we need. Um, it is uh, our last board meeting until the election. And just encourage everybody to go out and vote and to do their homework, do their diligence on who they think the best candidate and candidates are. And please vote. Thank you. Okay. Well, I would like to echo, I'm just so impressed with the students from Plymouth. And any time we have these students uh, that come and present, I am totally amazed at their, just their maturity and their ability to communicate and their poise and, uh, and the remarkable program that they're doing and relating it all to life. They're going to be amazing young adults someday. And and probably change the world. <clears throat> so thank you for your time and, and visiting us. Um, I was noticing all the donations, um, as they're always so generous, but um, as you mentioned, Bob, so many, a variety, from drama to the caring closet, and so many for robotics, and it's getting younger and younger with the robotics. And as I heard these students speaking, just taking Native Americans all the way to robotics and talking about that, it's just a it's a whole new world out there, it and it opens up a lot of avenues for, for our students. Um, Spirit Week, I know, is this week for the high schools, so if you can take in any of those events, it's always a, a fun night. And um, so with that said, I know the um, future of the teams for the playoffs is on the line, so it should be a really good game for those that love football. And congratulations to our shining stars, Peter and transportation. You know, the, our, our bus drivers are such an important piece to our system. Those are the first people that 
that um, our little ones see at the beginning of the day and usually at the end of the day. So um, thank you for all you do because I know that's got to be challenging. Just hauling my own few for years was challenging enough, but a whole bus full I can't even begin to imagine. <laughs> and Karen, uh, for, with all that she does and that Nepal, Nepal project was so amazing uh, last year. So it'll be fun to see what she does as she goes forward now with the, the culture club at, at Jefferson. Um, and I guess lastly, I visited Carpenter's uh, pre-primary center open house, and it was really fun to go in there and and um, see the rooms all set up and finished. They are just an exciting, fun place for little ones to learn and grow. The colors, the activities, just everything was, was pretty amazing. So if you get an opportunity to um, go over to Carpenter uh, one day, I'd advise that you do that. It was very fun. And I'm excited about the Northeast uh, Marzano program. I met one of the teachers this summer. Um, we were out and about, and I'll tell you, she's a veteran teacher, and she is so excited. You would have thought that she was a first-year teacher. She's very, very supportive and excited about this program, so I'm anxious to see where it goes mm -hmm. and all the hard work that's going into it. All right. Thank you, Lynn. I have the pleasure of going to Carpenter daily. And what a wonderful program they have over there. Uh, my son loves it, and all of the kids love it, whether they're in the Great Start program, whether they're in the Young Fives or the PYP. Those kids are having fun, and they are learning a ton over there. They really did a great job with that building. Um, thank you, everybody, for sticking around who's, who's still here listening. Um, Dr. Burnett, thank you for the information and the studies regarding the SROs. It's certainly something to consider and to look at as time draws near um, to our election. Uh, thank you to our shining stars. Uh, just to touch a little bit, you mentioned the bus drivers and how critical they are. Boy, the kids really <coughs> get connected to the bus drivers. Um, they know them on a, on a first name or depending on the driver, could be a last name basis, but they are thrown for a loop when they, when they change routes and all of a sudden you're looking at a new face in the morning or when you get out of school. So the bus drivers are really, really critical and, and kind of an understated role. Um, so I wish, you know, we had more. Um, I know we, we struggle with, with bus drivers, but man, they're, they're so important. Um, we mentioned a little bit about donations and there is a young man <coughs> battling stage four cancer uh, who we were given flyers this evening. So just to mention it briefly in hopes that it makes the paper. Um, Tyler Worth is, is his name? Uh, October 21st from noon until 5 o'clock at the American Legion 165. That's located at 5, 5111 Hedgewood Drive here in town. They're going to have food, drinks, a DJ, silent auction, a football board, a 50-50 raffle, and a bake sale uh, to raise money for this, this young man. So hopefully everybody can get out there and support him. And if you can't, uh, they're certainly accepting donations, um, I'm sure, in many different forms. Uh, as far as the election goes, I would like to thank our candidates, um, John Lauterbach, Phil Roche, Pam Singer and Patrick Frizee for running for the upcoming election for one of three seats on the board. Um, I would also like to inform our voters that our teachers are people who care more about this district and its kids than probably anybody in this room have collectively chosen to support John, Phil, Pam, and Pat during this upcoming election. Uh, I think it's equally important to note that the teachers have chosen to not support Kurt Yaki. As a member of this board for the past six years, I cannot point to any positive experiences or engagements that this board has had with Kurt Yaki. I can think of several negative experiences, many of which have taken place here in this boardroom, including and leading up to litigation against this district. I will not be voting for him in November. I encourage our voters to listen to our teachers this message they sent is very clear and it's very powerful. They do not support Kurt Yaki and neither do I. Get out and vote and when you do, vote in line with our teachers. Support our kids and value our district. That's all I have. To me? Patrick? Not much to say that hasn't been said here in terms of the presentation tonight from the Plymouth students. Um, 
Mr. Worth here. I plan on attending the fundraiser for Tyler, and I hope that others can find the time to do so as well. Uh, I do appreciate the union's endorsement uh, this kind of upcoming election. I encourage everybody to get out there and vote and research their candidates. Um, and I think is this week the band showcase at the at the high school. Mm -hmm. yes, so the Thursday. the um, press box was taken down in time. Yep. So that both sides will be open. Yes. And uh, I've been there a few times. I encourage people to get out and see if they haven't been there. It is an amazing night. A lot of hard work, a lot of students, a lot of parents, a lot of time and dedication goes into that. Um, I forget how many schools are there. I think it's at least a dozen. Oh, it? yeah. More than, more yeah. than that. Yeah. So it's, it's uh, more than that. my kids always enjoy going. So we'll be there again, hopefully, as long as it's not too cold. And uh, I think that's all I had for tonight. Volleyball game tomorrow night. Between Midland and Dow. <coughs> um, I just uh, wanted to say congratulations again to the kids from Plymouth and that wonderful presentation and Project Lead the Way and, and the PYP program mesh so nicely together. I'm so glad that Midland Public Schools has chosen to adopt both of them. I had the opportunity to work over at Central Park with first graders in uh, Project Lead the Way a couple weeks ago, and it is so much fun to see those kids exploring and, and seeking answers, and, and even at um, first grade level, drawing pictures that they're going to write about later and what they, what they, what they observe, the data that they're, they're getting. It's just amazing. And to know that these little kids from fifth graders now th from Plymouth have um, been through this program um, at least for a project or for um, the PYP program, and um, that the um, I think it's the kindergartners last year at uh, Central Park that were the first for where the project lead the way, and and how that's progressing through um, middle school and high school, and it's just uh, it's going to do great things for our kids. So it's really nice. That's it. Very good. Thank you. I won't reiterate all these great things, but I will uh, mention a few that weren't mentioned. So I went to the PIC uh, presentation, and we talked about a lot of new class opportunities at our secondary buildings. And we even, uh, they put us to work. So we had, we had scissors, and we, we created um, a clear box, and then learned a, a lesson on um, a CAD, I think it was. And um, it, w it was really cool to see how the secondary buildings are using the um, project um, Lead the Way and, and hands-on opportunities and starting with the problem and, and learning from um, problems as they move, move toward their, their goals. Uh, the names of the programs at the secondary building got a lot of talk. And, um, and there were things like, um, well, we're robotics. And can you help me with the names? Um, Turn your mic. Yeah, we have some cool course names like Code Wizards. Code Wizards. Yes. Um, Green Design, Robo Builders. And those were students selected in the middle school. Right. So there was a lot of uh, great conversation at the PIC meeting about that as well. Um, enrollment numbers should be coming in pretty soon, and I'm excited to see. It looks like uh, we'll, we'll be doing better than budget, so yep. um, that, that is looking good. And um, I was a little disappointed with the uh, press box uh, insurance and only getting $118,000 for that, so I don't know where we'll move forward there. Um, inclusion and diversity, we uh, went to New York City and we really had our kickoff for the, the inclusion and diversity with Dow Chemical and I'm looking forward to see uh, how that strategy um, might move forward and, uh, and gain some momentum here at Midland Public to really create a, a community uh, where kids and staff feel welcomed. And then I guess my last thing will be is a big thank you to the Midland City Education Authority, to the Teachers Union. And uh, I think they were very uh, strong in their, their support of four candidates. Patrick Frizee, congratulations. John Lauterbach, Phil Rausch, and myself were all uh, recommended by the Teachers Union. So I was very <coughs> proud of that. 
And I think that is all I have for tonight. Mr. Sherrill? Yeah, I'm going to add a little bit about the IBPYP and, you know, that started, um, this is the sixth year um, going through, as they mentioned, and, and I couldn't help but the young lady, Brad comment on her, her uh, quote, um, that was, that's everything we're trying to create right there, and that was so exciting to see. Um, I think, they'll, again, I keep telling people this generation is going to change the world for the better, and I really believe it when we're producing those kind of thinkers. But I'd be remiss to not say six years ago all of our local foundations stepped up to fund that program and the effects it's going to have on that. So we thank them very much. It's fully implemented and up and roaring and taking off very well. The press box mentioned multiple times tonight, um, So, but we're not done with our insurance company. We, Bob's working hard diligently. He's learned more about construction codes and uh, different pieces of that as we go. We are in debate over that um, press box, um, holding a little bit of hope we can get more. Um, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, Brad talked about design. Uh, the first user group is going to be... Um, internal some coaches and ad's then we're going to expand to the community um as we go um and i too have you know i don't often mention my coaching background but been around a long time a lot of press boxes a lot of places in different states and um it, it's going to be probably difficult to capture it all um here because we're going to have to figure out just how much we're going to spend and so hence um you know just to, just up the codes they're early um, guesstimates coming back from those who do that was, you know, you're talking five, six hundred thousand just to put a reasonable box up there with codes. And so we're going to have to get creative on it because we certainly didn't budget for this event to, to have occurred. Um, so we're going to have to get creative on that. Speaking of fundraisings, um, I have spoken to the, f the local foundations. They're not interested in putting their money in. But um, we, we have a meeting with Sharon Mortensen um, this Friday about potentially having others who want to donate and have a collection where they can get the right off and all those pieces that may motivate donators to do so. Timeline might be difficult. It's my fear when I talk about donation because that design uh, put out to bid, um, start to build, could be run it right now. You know, we got to get moving on that timeline. So hopefully, um, whatever we commit to, maybe we can collect some and we can kind of buffer a little bit of that cost and figure out where we're going to go with, with that full thing. So um, I'm not sure there's a win-win on this press box for us, I guess, is what I'm saying a little bit. I'm a little worrisome about expectation, what we can afford, how we get there to do that. And, and yes, we want to do it right. You know, we don't want to you know, be regretting this for 30, 40 years down the road. So it's going to be a balance. We'll constantly talk with you guys as we go and try to figure out where that lead, where you want to go down the road on that. Enrollment does look good. Way too early ever to count until we get it fully certified. So I'm not going to make a lot of comment, but it does look very good, very promising, um, and very stabilized. So we continue to very stabilize on that piece of it as we go forward. Um, Class size. I sent you some article on Detroit News about class size. There was a statewide article about class sizes on there. A lot of information in that article. Hopefully you had a chance to take a look at that. What years to prioritize. Where Michigan ranks. Our class size, is, by the way, is below all uh, Michigan averages across the district. And this year the class sizes are exceptional. So it's beaten our trend now that we're back financially strong than where we have ever been. So I gave you our class size as well in there. Um, I think that was a very positive piece. Um, we do have projects out to bid, <clears throat> and um, they're really being released to bid right now as we speak. Um, remember, we're trying that e-bidding process to make it easier for, for bidders, more accurate, no one getting eliminated. And so um, hopefully that process works as well as prevailing wage has changed, and that may get our merit shop folks uh, more interested in some of our projects as well. And then Alice Training, we are now um, introduced to Alice Training to all secondary and elementary teachers. Um, we have leads from each building and the administrator going to the same training that the officers who presented to us going. So we're bringing that in-house on January, I had it in my head, Brian, 17th, 16th, 16th, 17th. And so um, two-day trainings, and in the afternoon they actually get up and do. And so we did chose those two days because we have to have a clear hallway and area to go, and those are exam days in the high school and so in the afternoons, they'll get up and actually do this stuff. They'll become our internal trainers to begin to go back and train at each building to implement the Alice um, process going forward, um, another key component of our, our, our safety plan that we've presented. Um, this week, our school administrators will get an in-depth training in what we call Crisis Go, a power, powerful communication tool. I've spoke to you a little bit about it where it'll um, send 
audible messages across our phones, followed with a, a, a written message for what we need to go into. A lot more power in there is where, where teachers can actually call alerts. We can communicate as the ongoing crisis this is going. It's really a powerful tool. And so our administrator is going to get a little more in-depth training. We'll begin to introduce staff to that, and we should have that up in a short period of time. As well as the digital radios are beginning to arrive. Um, the digital radio, if you recall, we started that process about a year, year and a half ago. Um, and then now every building, all support personnel will have these radios, and that's another way to communicate through this device. Pretty powerful going forward so we're continuing to move forward on safety and training as well that's all I have for you okay very good at this time I'll accept a motion to adjourn so moved support moved by McFarland support by Ferdell all in favor aye, aye. 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 we stand adjourned <laughs>